I was waiting for this for a long, long time, and it finally happened. We can now use end tracking with the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. That's right, before, if you wanted to use end tracking with a headset like the MetaQuest, you could only do so with their own SDK. But with the recent Unity XR update, this is not the case anymore. So in today's video, we are going to see how to set up and tracking with the Unity XR Toolkit. And of course, go even further to learn how we can use it with the other feature of the Unity XR. Now, I'm putting a lot of effort in this video. My goal is to make one per week every Sunday. And you can help me for free by subscribing and liking this video down below or even join our community on Patreon where you can get access to the source code of all of my tutorials and exclusive content. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm inside a completely new Unity project. I want to show you the setup from scratch so that you will be able to do this on your own. And anyway, as with any VR setup, the first thing we want to do is to go to the XR management settings with edit, project settings, XR plugin management. There, let's click on install XR plugin management. And we want now to select the open XR for desktop over here. As you can see, it might ask you to switch input systems. So let's say yes. And now it should restart the editor as well. Perfect. Now let's do the same in Android and click again on open XR. So as you can see for both, we have a little warning showing here because we need to add some interaction profile. So let's go to open XR under the XR plugin management. And for desktop, click on the plus button and add all of the device that you want to support. In my case, I will add everything. Now let's go in Android. And what we want here is to click on the plus button and add the Oculus Touch controller profile and then enable MetaQuest support down here. There you go. But now this is where things get tricky. So be careful. Because in my case, by adding OpenXR, we have downloaded the OpenXR plugin, of course, but not the latest version. That's right. If we go here to Windows, Package Manager, select in Project. As you can see, we have here the OpenXR plugin version 1.5 installed. But if we want to use end tracking, we need to have at least OpenXR 1.6. And this might not be a problem that you will have in the future, of course. So if you see anything above 1.6, you are good to go. But otherwise, what we can do is simply click on this little plus button over here and click then on add package by name, write com.unity.xr.openxr and click on add. And after <laughs> waiting a little bit, as you can see, we have the OpenXR plugin now set to 1.7. Perfect. And also, maybe like me, you will have this window showing asking to fix some things on our setting. So let's simply click on the fix button to resolve this issue. There you go. Now, if we close this window and the package manager as well, if we go back to the XR plugin management desktop, as you can see, we have also here a little error showing. So let's click on it. And it is basically asking us to restart Unity as the OpenXR has been updated. So let's click on Fix as well. Then click on Apply. And now wait for the editor to restart. There you go. Now the new OpenXR is set up. Of course, as I told you, this is something that will not be needed to do in the future. But anyway, from here, it is a smooth ride. Next, let's install the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. For this, let's close everything. Go to Windows, Package Manager, select Unity Registry, and search for XR Interaction Toolkit. There it is. So as you can see, the version I can download in my case is 2.0. But for end tracking, we are going to need at least Unity version 2.3. So if you don't see it here, you can actually download the latest Unity version available, like we did just a second ago with the OpenXR, by clicking on the plus button, add package by name, and write com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit. And then let's click on add and voila, it is downloaded. Let's click on yes. I made a backup. Go ahead. Now, as you can see, this has correctly downloaded a version above 2.3, 
And as we always need to do with the Unity XR Toolkit, let's also import the starter asset by clicking here on Import. Perfect! But the XR Interaction Toolkit is not the only package that we need. To use end tracking, we are going to download Unity XR Hand package. Now, you won't find this package in the Unity list, unfortunately, but we can still download it in the same way as I showed earlier by clicking on the plus button, add package by name, and write com.unity.xr.hands, and finally click on add. There you go. If we have a look at all the package that we have in the project, as you can see, it is right here, the famous XR hands package. So finally, let's also click here on import to import the hand visualizer sample, which will be necessary to animate a hand model to the position of my hand in real life. But now, by downloading the XR hand package, this has done something very, very important to our open XR settings. Now, if we close this package manager and go back to the XR management settings, with Edit, Project Settings, Open XR. As you can see, we have now two new little toggles right here that we can enable to enable hand tracking on desktop. And now, if we go to Android, as you can see, we have the same. So let's enable it also. And now everything should work and we should be able to use hand tracking on this product. And there you go. Congratulations. The boring part of the tutorial is now over. With that, we have finished with all the settings necessary to use end tracking with the Unity XR. So now let's close the project settings and learn how to use it. Okay, so here I'm on an empty Unity scene. Let's add a plane by right clicking on the hierarchy. Go to 3D object, plane, reset its position over here to 0, 0, 0. And this will be the ground for our little VR end tracking application. Now we can select the main camera and remove it by pressing on the delete key. And at this point, we could get started on making a XR origin like I did in my tutorial series about the Unity XR Toolkit. But with the latest version of the Unity XR Toolkit, there is a pre-made XR origin that is ready for us to use with some interactor and locomotion that I will be able to find in Samples XR Interaction Toolkit, the version that we have, so 2.3 in my case, Starter Assets, Prefabs, and here it is, the complete XR origin setup. So let's simply drag it in the hierarchy. Now this rig has a locomotion system with both continuous and teleportation. It can interact by grabbing object and more, and I covered it a bit more in details in this video. So go watch it if you want to know more about it. But anyway, to add hand tracking to any VR rig, it's actually very simple. We need to add a component called hand visualizer somewhere. We could do so on the XR origin right here, but let's instead do it on a separate game object. So for this, let's right click on the camera offset, create empty game object, and this will create an empty child of the camera offset, as you can see, and we can rename it and visualizer. There you go. Then let's click on add component and add a hand visualizer component. There it is. So this component need a reference to the XR origin. So let's drag it over there. Then for the left and right end mesh, there are some ready to use hand model available by going to samples, XR hands, the version that we have, hand visualizer, models. And now let's go back to the hand visualizer and drag the left end on the left hand mesh and the right end on the right hand mesh. There you go. Next, we can say the material that we want to be used by the end. So in my case, let's go to the asset root on the project. I'm going to right click, create material, rename it blue, and simply set the color to blue. This will, of course, make a very simple blue material that we can now drag back to the hand visualizer. There you go. We also want to see the hand mesh. So let's click on draw meshes, obviously. And now we have two other settings that can be useful in some case to display the bones and the velocity of our finger joints. So for this, let's go back to hand visualizer in the project folder and there go to prefabs. Now we can simply drag the joint in the debug draw prefab and the velocity prefab in the velocity prefab. And initially, in my case, I don't want these debug things to appear. So let's simply set the velocity type to none. And there you go. Now it is the moment of truth. Let's click on play to try what we made. 
Okay, so I'm in VR right now, so it is working. And by the way, I had a weird bug on my end which didn't launch VR in the first time that I tried, so I needed to reopen the Unity Editor. This might be helpful if you have the same issue. But anyway, I can see my controller right now, but if I rest them on my desk and that they do not move for a few seconds, ta-da, my hands appears and hand tracking is working. Now, this is always awesome, and as you can see, this works really well, the tracking is doing great. And now, if we don't leave play mode and that we go back to the hand visualizer component, as you can see, I can show or hide these hands with the draw meshes toggle. And if I click on debug draw joint, as you can see, this show all the joint used to animate my hand. Next, if I go to velocity and set it to linear, for example, as you can see, this one show the direction of the movement of my finger, which can be pretty useful sometimes. But now two main problems remain. As you can see, the controller of the VR rig is on my wrist. And so the question is, is it possible to hide it? And more generally speaking, switch from controller to end tracking more easily. And then the second big question, how can I use this end tracking with the interaction system of Unity XR? And for this, we are going to take a look at a gorgeous demo scene that Unity has prepared for us. The end demo scene. So let's leave play mode to try it. Okay, so to download the end demo scene, let's go back to Package Manager with Windows, Package Manager, select In Project, and go to XR Interaction Toolkit. There you go. Down here, as you can see, we have the hand interaction demo. Let's import it. There you go, it is downloaded now, let's close the package. And as you can see, this has added a new folder on the Unity XR sample folder. But more importantly, this has added a super cool prefab for end tracking that we can find if runtime prefabs, and this is the prefab that I'm talking about, the complete XR origin hands setup. We can drag it in the hierarchy next to the basic complete XR origin from earlier, and as you can see, these two are very, very similar. The thing that differs is that it does not have the locomotion system. Instead, we have here the hand and controller manager. And this is the script that can allow you to switch from controller to hand tracking. Now, in its children, we can see the hand visualizer that we added as well to the other rig. But the main important thing with this prefab is how it is used with the interactor system from Unity XR. Because, as you can see, if we go under left and right controller, we have three types of interactor, poke, direct, and ray. But we have the same for the left and right hand as well, which is the one used by hand tracking. Now, if we go to the direct interactor of the left hand, for example, as you can see, what changed from the setup with controller is simply the input action reference. For example, the position used here is the pinch position to allow grabbing and placing the object grab between our thumb and index. And if we go to the select input, double click on it, as you can see, under select, we have the selection that occurs with the grip pressed for the controller, but also on the index pressed, which is when we are pinching with end tracking. And there you go. This is how you can hook end tracking to the Unity Interaction System. So anyway, now let's remove the old XR origin, now that we know more about this one. And I think it is time to give it a try by clicking on play. There you go. As you can see, I can see my controller, but when I switch, I can see my hands. And this works the other way around. Oh, and by the way, if the hands are pink in this example, this is because in my case, I'm not using universal rendering pipeline, but the standard pipeline instead. So you can basically leave play mode, go to the end visualizer, where you will be able to find the end mesh material, which is set to none, actually. So what we can do is just give it the blue material that we made earlier just right there. And now if we click on play again, it should not be pink anymore. And you should be able to see the end with the same material that we did earlier. But this time with this beautiful rig, as you can see, we can easily go from controller to end tracking in just a few seconds without having the controller showing anymore. This is so cool. Now, as you can see, there is no interactable on this scene to test all of the interaction. So what we can do is actually leave play mode and instead 
we are going to try the rig in a great interaction scene that Unity made for us in Samples, XR Interaction Toolkit, 2.3, Hand Interaction Demo, Runtime, and here, double click on the end demo scene. There it is. So as you can see, we have the complete XR origin and setup prefab from earlier, but there is also a bunch of interactable using the Unity XR interaction toolkit, like direct grab, poke, and so on. So let's click on play to try this. Oh, and by the way, if the materials are all pink, like it's my case because I'm not using Universal Rendering Pipeline, you can simply go in the Material subfolder over there, then select all of these, and for the shader, select it to Standard. And this should fix your little issue. And there you go, guys. As you can see, you can now understand the power of Unity XR. This is just so cool how it can simply handle hand tracking by changing some input action. And as you can see, this works really, really great. Damn, I want to make an hand tracking game right now. But anyway, I hope that you enjoy watching this video. But before leaving, we have a deal. If you made it to the end of this video, you can go down below and make sure to like it. Thank you for watching. And also a big, big shout out to my Patreon, which are the one allowing me to make this. And see you soon, of course, for another tutorial. Bye bye.